Hello and welcome to another episode of Community Update. I am your host, Promise Accord. Olusheyi Ajitumobi is a seasoned real estate consultant with over 20 years experience in Nigeria before immigrating to Canada in Nova Scotia 2018. In January of 2019, he became a licensed realtor in Nova Scotia and joined the Royal LaPage Atlantic, where he won several awards under his belt. Ajitumobi has helped Many people in the African community achieved their goal of owning a home in Nova Scotia and other parts of Canada. Sheyi Ajemota joins us now from Halifax. Hi, Sheyi. I'm very good. Thank you, Promise. How are you doing? I'm doing great and it's good to see you. So, Sheyi, the housing crisis is not getting any better here in Nova Scotia for both old and new homeowners. As a leading realtor in the community, what would you say regarding the situation? Uh, well, what, what I would say uh, about uh, the capacity of home in Nova Scotia and even other parts of uh, Canada uh, is actually based on the number of people that are buying home at this time. That means we have to talk about population. There's increase in population, and uh, I would say Canada is not prepared for the kind of population they have at the, at the moment in terms of housing. So you, you have a lot of demand compared to the supply of homes that is available on the market. And of course, anywhere you have shortage of homes, any, in any part of the world, there's always a spike in the price, in prices. Because if you have little supply and uh, there's so much demand, then the prices will keep going up. So that's what we are experiencing right now in Africa. So clearly this is not in the hands of the common man, but in the hands of government. Are there any intervention plans in place by the government and of course the uh, key stakeholders to alleviate some of the problems that uh, we are seeing today? Uh, well, uh, I think governments are trying to look into what they can do and how far they can arrest the situation because uh, I think that the... the, the only thing that they might need to do is to increase the number of new construction coming on the market. And the only way they can do that is to open up more new subdivisions. Let it be easy for the builder to have access to uh, land their property, to have access to law to build. So if they have access to law, for instance, if you have, let's say we have like 15 builders in, in Alifax, and the government is giving each of them maybe like two acres or three acres of lot to develop. So we have more new subdivision that will open up. So if we have more new subdivision that is open up and more new construction coming in, then there won't be pressure on resale. What I call resale is uh, our existing property. So that if there's no, no pressure on existing property, and you have new construction, a lot of new construction coming on the market, then it will regulate the price. Until that is done, this situation will continue because I don't think Canada will suddenly stop uh, uh, immigration process. So the, the problem will, will continue. Uh, definitely. Uh, that is our fears now. So, for example, if someone uh, is looking to get the property here in Nova Scotia, say the HRM or the environs, what are the steps? What are the processes this person must bear in mind uh, while going in for a property? Okay, uh, well, the first step is for, for the person to be pre approved for mortgage. You want to be sure that you are even eligible to get a mortgage. Now, when you pre approved, I always tell people that with this market, you need to have it at the back of your mind that you, you will not be thinking about. Uh, the best home that you want is this part of the world we're not talking about i want my dream home you need to know that what you are prepared for or what your budget is is able to buy whatever is available to you it's not about what you think you can get so if you pay approved for instance i will give you an instance if you pay approved for let's say five hundred thousand, with the market we are in right now that is really hot and Crazy. If you have to approve for 500000 and you're looking at buying a home, maybe a three-bedroom house, 
Some will say they want to be cashed out. That is a house that is standing on its own. You want a, a three bedroom detached house, all the, the rooms on the upper floor, you have the master bedroom on it, you have the two other rooms that have a common bathroom. On the main floor, you have uh, a powder room or a guest, a, a guest toilet. And you want to have a basement that has a red room and maybe a bedroom and a full bathroom because you're looking at, oh, maybe you're renting your basement to, to augment your deal by right? your, your mortgage payment. So if you have a budget of 500000 you might not be able to get that kind of home in this market. Because, of course, you, you have a lot of listings that are listed within that price range. But by the time you, this competition was set in, you might not be able to achieve it with 500000 So what I would advise people is, with your budget, if you are able to get a home, maybe a home that has just two full baths, maybe a bath on the upper floor, and maybe a bathroom in the basement, you can buy it for now so that you know you are a homeowner. You just give yourself a target of a year or, or one and a half year, then you can sell that home and you'll be able to buy a better home or the kind of home you really want. So that, that, that's my take on that. Right, that's a good advice there. So a lot of people describe the current situation as the seller's market uh, uh, situation. So a lot of people also are taking advantage of the current situation and are selling up properties, some for profit purposes, for benefits, and some for investment. And uh, there definitely has to be some sort of uh, pros and cons, uh, you know, that goes with it. So what would be those concerns that you want to allay so that people will be aware of? Okay, now, when you're experiencing the seller's market, now, there are uh, some points that you need to keep in mind when you're buying a home. Now, when you're buying a home, there are some conditions that you need to meet as a, as a buyer. Yeah, that, that's what we call buyer condition. You want to buy a home, you're looking at maybe you're going to do a, a home inspection, you're looking at your financing, you're looking at insurance and all of that. With this market, for you to be able to win a bid when you put in an offer for a home, you might need to look away from some of these conditions so that you, your, your offer will be strong. For instance, you might want to look away from uh, doing an home inspector, which might not be too good for the buyer. But that is, the, that, is, that, that is where we find ourselves with this market. Then you want to look away from home inspector, your financing cost might not be there because you are sure that, oh, you've done your pre-approval and with your pre-approval, if you're sure that you're going to get financing, then you want to take out the financing clause, the insurance clause is not there, and you're looking at your condition, date, maybe you're leaving it for like a day or two so that your your offer can be strong and when you have strong offers with, without all these conditions, you stand a better chance for you to win the bid. Of course, with a higher bid, higher price being offered. That, that there's no uh, rocket science about what they're going to offer for any home. Of course, you just have to put your best foot forward in this market. You don't just have to think, oh, if I, some people will say, if I, if I over, over bid, there's mm -hmm. nothing like over bidding when you're experiencing seller's market. You can only underbid. Because when you over bid, if in your own mind, if you over bid and you are able to win the bid and you're able to have an accepted offer, then it's good for you. But if you are not winning the bid or you are not getting an accepted offer, that means you are underbidded. Then you will not get the home. Right, right. So the, the concern would be, for how long are we going to hold on? What is the future of the housing here in, in Nova Scotia? Uh, well, uh, what I can say is, we, the way we're looking at it, it's, uh, it's going to continue like this at least for another one year or two, until even if uh, the government comes with that program, which I will call a joint venture with us, and they have to build homes, uh, different categories of homes, you know, with different kinds of finishing, before that can go around in, the, in this uh, society or community, it will take a bit of time. And of course, it will see uh, the, the prices will still keep going up. So it, it's going to take a bit of time. 
for it to to to, to cushion down. But what I can say is this: with the way housing is going in Halifax, or even I would say in Canada generally, a law, a, some set of people will not be able to afford to buy a home because if you are, if you have a low down, if you have a low uh, pre-approval, maybe people that are within the pre-approval of three fifty, four hundred thousand dollars, and if you are not careful, you might not be able to buy a home. Especially when you are looking at the kind of home that, oh, maybe my friend bought this kind of home and that's the kind of home I want to buy. And you're looking at it, oh, this is the kind of location I'm looking at. Some people would criticize that, oh, like in, in our own, in our own society, some people would say, I don't like privacy, that I prefer Bedford. Some would say, I prefer Rockingham. If you start thinking that way, oh, you might not be able to buy a home in this situation. So much fear out there. But before I let you go, Shei, you're a very busy person. And our viewers want to know what advice do you have for them finally before we let you go? Yes, my advice to, to buyers out there, because I will center this around buyers because it's the seller's market, is do your pre approval. Uh, and like I said earlier, make sure you're not thinking about the best home to buy. If you start thinking about the best home to buy, you might be missing out. Don't put your mind as if that you must be a detached. Some people will say, I don't want a turn out. I don't want a semi detached. I want a detached. That is not, we are not in that era now. It, you, you don't have to think that it must be this kind of house. This is the kind of uh, feature I want in my home. You might not be able to achieve that with this kind of market, with the market we are in right now. Because I can tell you in the market space right now, I've written offers in the past two weeks where you are competing with other 50 buyers for a home. If you have to compete with 50 buyers, how much can you compete? <laughs> how much can you compete? Now you are competing <laughs> with people that might have even a better and bigger pre-approval than you. If you're looking Absolutely. at a situation where someone has a pre-approval of 700,000 and you, you have a pre-approval of 450,000. A home is listed for 350. With your 450, you think, okay, I want to offer 450. The other guy that has 700 is ready to offer 550. Then you cannot, you cannot, you can, you cannot even compete with him. So you want to look at it that uh, you're not looking at everything you want in a house. You're not comparing yourself to the other man that bought his home maybe in 2019 that he bought his home for 250,000. Because that yeah. kind of home that was bought for yeah. 250000 in 2019, you cannot get it. You might be looking at 600000 to buy that kind of home at this moment. So you Certainly. don't want to start comparing <laughs> yourself to that kind of person. You have to be, you have to be real. You have to be, to be real with the markets. And secondly, I will advise uh, our people. I'm talking about the African community right now. I will advise our people that uh, it is buying home here is not like where we are coming from in Africa. It's not like you're buying a home to keep for your kids, or you say, oh, my home is going to inherit this home. No, you can, in your lifetime here in Canada, you can buy as many, as much as 10 homes in your lifetime. You can buy and resell and buy another one. So you don't need to keep in mind that, oh, this home must be the best and perfect home I need to buy. No. Just right. buy what you are able to buy now. Make right. sure you're living with this market. Make sure you're living a gap of about a hundred to about a 450,000 that you, you above what the home is listed for. So that you can compare very well in, in the market too. There are a lot of communities right now that are doing very well with this competition. Look at the Indian community because they come together. We call them they do magic buying. They come together. Mm -hmm. You can see families coming together. I don't know how they live together anyway. If you have two, like you have two people that are pre approved for maybe five hundred or six hundred thousand, and they are coming together to form. A, a bond to, to be a, a single buyer, 
then their strength to buy, their ability to buy increases. Then they might be able to be able to they might be able to to buy at the range of a million dollars compared wow. to someone that has just a pre-approval of four fifty or five hundred thousand. You and your wife, maybe what you have is just four hundred and four hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, How do so you want to compare with that kind of person? Clearly, cannot, that's. That's a smart way for people on the other side. Well, Shay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me, promise. Thank you. Yes, so that was Shay joining us from Halifax. Uh, he's a real a realtor, a prominent one within this area. And please don't forget to join us next time for community update. And don't forget to also subscribe to our channel for more community update. I am Promise Okoy, and I'll see you soon.